Praise God. I'm, just, I'm excited. I'm excited because I know that the Lord is, is going to do something, something great. You know, I've told y'all quite a few times lately that I feel like I'm on that launching pad again. Every time I'm on that launching pad, I know God's about to do something because it's just, and, and sometimes it takes days, sometimes it takes months, sometimes it takes a little longer than that. But I know when I feel that, that God is just doing something. Um, I, I've been meaning to bring this Ephesians 1, 17 through 23 to you. It's, this is not the sermon this morning, but uh, this is what I want to uh, want you to write it down if you can, and if not, go to your Bible and, and mark it. Do whatever you need to do. But this is a prayer that you can take to your prayer time. And, and I've been praying this, I, I guess, maybe for years, even before we came here. I ha I've got it written or got it, got it wrote down in my uh, Bible as a prayer. And it says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He's, he's, that's, that's a prayer for you that the Lord will give you wisdom and knowledge and, and revelation about him. Because, you know, sometimes when, uh, and I, I watched a lady that was talking about uh, how hard it was for her to understand the Bible. And she said she had to just pray and pray and pray. Well, that's where we pray for the revelation. That's where we ask the Lord for the revelation of the knowledge of him. And then the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That's, that's like, you know, open it up to me, Lord. Shine a light down on it like he did when he called me. You know, the, the light was on that. The, it was, it was uh, dark in the house. There was no light on when the Lord called me and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon you because the Lord hath anointed you to preach good tidings to the meek, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison doors to them that are bound. The light, God's light, was right on that scripture, and there it was. I mean, I could read it, I could see it, and then he put it in me so that I would be able to quote it. But that's what I'm... Do what? Ephesians 1, 17 through 23 is the ones that I want y'all to begin to pray, to begin to use in your prayer time. And uh, it says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of, your call, of his calling, his calling on your life, and what the riches of the glory of his, his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his, of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church Jesus is the head of everything in this church. We have to make sure that we don't take his place, that he is always in the place that he's supposed to be. Just like this says, he's put all things under his feet and gave him God, gave him to be the head over all things in the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in just a few minutes. <clears throat> but we've had... The last, last three times that, um, that I was up here, and, and I know that we had an interruption one of the Sundays when I had the nosebleed and couldn't come up, but um, this, is, this was a, I guess you call it a four, four uh, series. I'll get it in my head in a minute. It was, it's a series, and I, I cut it down into to four different sermons so that we could get what Jesus was saying to us. The uh, last three services, we learned that Jesus would, was asking the blind beggar. He said, what is it that you want me to do for you? Does any of you remember that one where the blind beggar come and he was asking Jesus, what is it that you want me to do? Then we're, we're asking the Lord, what do you want us to do, Lord? That was the second one. 
What do you want us to do, Lord? What can we do for you, Lord? And then, Brenda, can you? Oh, they closed it. Okay, I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, then last week, the answer came to us when we said, what do you want us to do for you, Lord? He says, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Y'all remember that one? The ones that were here, you remember it. So today we're going we're gonna to look at the scriptures a little bit deeper and, and we're going to see where we're going to receive instructions. We receive instructions from the Lord where he tells us to take up our cross, where he tells us to deny ourselves, where he tells us to follow him. And we're going to find in the word of God that Jesus spent 40 days, 40 days, and I know that you'll remember this, on earth after his resurrection. Man, man. Every, every time I turn to look at that this morning, it's, it's like the Lord it just goes through me. The Lord's going to do something. The Lord's going to do something. Y'all begin to pray. I'm serious. You begin to pray for Easter morning because the Lord has got something planned. I feel it in my spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We praise you, God. Help us, God, to get a hold of what you're doing in the spirit, Lord. Help us to know and to move by your spirit, God, each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. But he spent, he spent 40 days on the earth after his resurrection. And, and there was over, the Bible says, there was over 500 people that witnessed him alive and well. He was alive. He was walking. He was well. He was not all messed up. He did not go, come out of the grave the way he went into the grave. He went, he went from, from the cross into the grave all bloody, battered, bru uh, bruised, all messed up. I mean, just messed up. I, I was uh, reading a book to Joey this week about the different things that happened during that time. And it's, it's excruciating. They had to come up with a new word, y'all. They came up with the word excruciating. Wasn't that the word, Joey? They came up with the word excruciating. X cross. X cross because they didn't know how to explain how bad he looked they didn't know how to how to figure out what to say about how bad and they came up with the word excruciating that was excruciating to him they 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 told everything in this book about uh, there was a doctor uh, a professor that explained it to this man that was doing the interview and he was writing about it and he didn't believe it because he was an atheist. He didn't believe any of, the, of that. He didn't think that Jesus went into the tomb and came out alive. He had to have some kind of different explanation because he just could not believe that somebody would, would, be, would uh, uh, go to the cross like that. He says, oh, he was just, he, he was just playing dead. Come on, y'all. Come on. It's not that way. We know what happened. It was excruciating for Jesus. But he came, he went into the grave or tomb, but he came out. And he didn't look, he didn't look like he did when he went into the tomb because nobody would have believed him. They wouldn't have believed him. If somebody come out of the tomb and they were all scarred up and all messed up like that and mangled up and barely walking, because he could not, he failed if you'll remember, and I don't know why I'm going here, but he failed if you remember going to the cross. And, he had, and they had to get, uh, who was it? Come on, y'all. Uh, yeah. Simon. Had to get Simon to, to pick up his cross and carry it the rest of the way. I knew that. I just couldn't get it. But I, I'm telling you, you know, who would have believed him if he said, I am the son of God, if he came out of the tomb like that? You think about it. Would you? If you were standing there looking at him, we don't have a door here, y'all, so y'all are going to hear the kids. <laughs> but Matthew, let's go to our text. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, 
even unto the end of the earth. Now, I'm going I'm to read that again in just a little bit, but I want to I go first, and I want to tell you that Jesus knew before any of the events of the resurrection, before anything happened, before the crucifixion, the resurrection, uh, even before the Last Supper, when, before he came, he knew what was going to take place. And he knew that he would have, before he gave them the Great Commission, because that's what this scripture is called as the Great Commission in, t- in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, because that was the last words that Jesus spoke to them, uh, uh, teaching them, let me re- rephrase that, teaching them, um, to uh, observe all things and that was before all of this happened and it's, and it's uh, go into all the world he knew that he was going to have to <clears throat> prepare the disciples he knew that so that they would not be blindsided so that they would know so that that you know even though they they didn't they were they were uh, um, disheartened they were hurt because the one they thought was the Messiah or they knew, they knew it in their hearts was the Messiah was being crucified he was being crucified and he he wanted them to know that these things must happen they must be fulfilled prophecies in the Bible every prophecy that you read in the Bible has got to be fulfilled and it is being fulfilled like I said, you know, we're like on the last page of the Bible, of the prophecies, because there's so many that's, it, it just seems like it's, it, it's just going so fast right now that, that prophecies are being fulfilled if you read and if you listen to the news and different things that are going on. And <clears throat> these have to be fulfilled before Jesus can return. They, every one of them has to be fulfilled. And, and Mark 8 and 31 tells us, and he began to teach them, he's talking to the disciples, that the Son of Man must suffer many things Many things. And he's going to be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and the scribes. And he's going to be killed. And after three days, he's going to rise again. Jesus explained all of these things. They have to come. It has to happen. Now, can you imagine? I want you all to think about this. I want, I want us all to think about this. Can you imagine if you knew that all of this was going to take place in your life and you still had to go through with it? Could you do that? You know, I think Jesus is the only one. Uh, Linda, I believe Jesus. I, there ain't no belief in I mean, I know it. Jesus is the only one that could have done this. He was prepared. Do what? There you go. We'd all be trying to figure out a way. Even, even Jesus asked the Father, you know, if there is a way, Lord. But he knew. He knew. But, you know, in the flesh, and we are all flesh, In the flesh, he said that. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He also told the the disciples that the fact that though he was the Messiah, though he was the Messiah, these things were were happening. They were going to take place. There was no way around it because if he had not, if he'd gotten to the cross and he called 10,000 angels. Y'all know, the, y'all know the song. You know the story. You know the scriptures. If he had called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free that day, we would be sacrificing animals. Now, how many of y'all want to sacrifice an animal? Not me. Not me. No, I couldn't have done that. Jesus knew. Jesus knew that the words of the prophecy, the prophets, they must They must be fulfilled. It was necessary. It was necessary. That's what what must means is to be, is necessary. It had to come to pass. All these things had to come to pass in the scriptures. Uh, Luke 24 and 44 says, And Jesus said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you, or spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses. And in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me, it all come, had to come, has to come to pass. There's no way around it. And then, now this is where in Luke 24, this, he's talking to the disciples, talking about all this thing, all these things that's going to take place. And you know, just like the rest of us, we're sitting around a table and we're eating and we're talking about things. And then somebody rises up and says, I'm going to be crucified. 
I, I, I'm going to be beaten, battered, bloodied, and bruised. Do you not think that we would stand up and say, uh-uh, no, 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 no. Well, this is Peter. Y'all know Peter, don't you? Peter's that one that's, that's outspoken. He's the one that's going to stand up and he's going to say, uh-uh, uh-uh. Verse 32 there in Luke 24, it says that Peter took him and began to rebuke him. He began to rebuke Jesus and tell him, saying that these bad things are not going to happen to you, Jesus. No, 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 no. We're not going to allow that. We're going to stick with you. We're going to watch over you. We're going to take care of you. Now, I'm putting my own words right here. But he said, no, no, I rebuke you. You can't say these things. Don't allow these things to, to be said. Don't, lo- don't allow it to come out of your mouth. And then in verse 33, ooh. In verse 33, Jesus turns about. Now, at this moment, Jesus has been looking at Peter as Peter speaks to him. He's just been looking at him. And all of a sudden, he turns toward everybody. Now, you don't have his eye on Peter, just Peter anymore. He has his eye on everybody. And he says, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Well, he didn't say in the name of Jesus. I always say in the name of Jesus. But I rebuke you, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. That was his words. Get thee behind me, Satan. Now, he wasn't looking at Peter. I I thought for a lot of years that he was just talking to Peter, Tiffany. And I thought, Lord, I'm offended because you told told Peter, get get behind me, Satan. You called Peter Satan. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit said said, uh, a a long time ago, he says, no, Martha, look. See, this is where we got to get deep into the scriptures. We've got to read the scripture over and over and over sometimes so that you will get it, so that we can understand what it says. And and he says, we we will be thinking that we're insulted by what he said. But Jesus, he was talking directly to Satan because he turned from Peter. He was not looking at Peter in his eyes. He turned from Peter. That was the key word. I had it in one of my Bibles I had forgotten about, and I pulled it out when I was reading, uh, going over these scriptures, and and it was up at the top, Martha. (laughs) That's the way the Holy Spirit speaks to me. The Lord will say, Martha, Martha, wake up. You know, listen to what I have to say. Look at this. And it 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 said, look at the way it's written. Look at the way that the, the uh, um, I had the word in there, the pronounce, not the pronunciation. What do you call those things, y'all? Commas. and I know, but they're called something, all of them together. Come on, Linda, you're smart. Come- <laughs> but anyway, I had to look at these things. It's written down in my Bible. I just have to go back and look. But I had to look where it was at and, and the one where, where Jesus turned. That's when the Holy Spirit stopped me. And he said, Jesus was not looking at just Peter. He did not call Peter Satan. He was speaking out like we do. I'm standing up here sometimes and I'm speaking out. But I'm not directly speaking to you, Tiffany, unless I say, Tiffany, this is for you. It can be for anybody. And so the the Lord was saying, rebuke you, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Because he knew that that Peter didn't understand what was going to take place. Peter didn't understand at that moment that that, 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 uh, uh, a stone was going to be rolled away, Tiffany. Peter didn't understand that that, uh, Jesus was going to walk out. And that things were going to be... Because we couldn't comprehend it. Could you have comprehended it if he was telling you that all this stuff was going to happen to him and then he was going to rise again? Uh, I can't comprehend unless I see something. I can't uh, understand it. When when we have some kind of of a a, a, a decoration, you know, Brenda has to put it out there. And I'll see it after it's done. Because I I, I can't comprehend that. I would not have comprehended what Jesus was saying or been able to imagine in my heart what all we know from the word now that took place. You see what I mean? We, but we, we, like Peter, we, just, we don't want bad things to happen. We want everything to be good. We want all things to work out. You know, God is sovereign. 
That's what we say. God, hold on, y'all. God is sovereign. God is omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's, he's omniscient. You know, he's everywhere at all, t- all times. He's mo- more, most powerful. That's what those words mean. And we've got to remember. He is. He is, people. We may not understand the things that God's got planned. We might not can see it in our own spirits, in our own mind. When the Lord, you know, he'll just give us one thing or, or, or two things, you know, or, or speak one word to us and, and we don't know until it happens. Or, or maybe you have a, a, a vision or a dream. But it's never exactly the same as when it happens. The Lord just gives you a little bit to prepare you. Just, that's what he was doing with the disciples. He was preparing them. Getting them ready so that they would know when all this took place. That it was him. That it was up to him. And he chose to do it for us. John 13 and 7 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do, thou knowest not now. You don't know about it now. You don't understand it now. But thou shalt know hereafter. When it all took place, when it all come down to it, when Jesus appeared to them, you know, uh, during those 40 days, then they realized, they realized why this had happened, why it took place, because Jesus knew that he was coming back. If you look close enough, if we look close enough in our lives, we can see signs. We can see signs all the time where Jesus prepares us for things. We don't realize it until after the fact But a lot of time, all the time, I say all the time, the Lord will prepare us for anything that happens in our life. But like the two men on the road to Emmaus. Y'all remember that story. The two men walking on the road to Emmaus and and Jesus come walking along. They didn't recognize him. They didn't see him. They didn't know that it was Jesus. They were sad. They were overwhelmed. They were distraught. They were discussing everything that had happened at the cross and, and everything that had happened at the, at the whipping post and how they probably said how bad Jesus looked, you know, and how, how everything was so, you know, just unbelievable. It was just totally unbelievable. And Jesus himself came. He was walking up to them, walked up right beside them, started talking to them. They didn't recognize him. They did not recognize him. And they even talked to him about, uh, well, they talked him into staying for dinner that night. If y'all remember the story. They got, they got, uh, they, when they were off the road to Emmaus, got to where they were going, they talked him into staying for dinner. That's where their eyes were open. That's where their eyes were open. Their eyes were open, and they, they realized he had been with them the whole time. Sometimes, people, you think about it. Sometimes we're going through things in our life and we, we, we lose sight. We lose total sight of Jesus because things can get so overwhelming and we just don't, we just don't know what to do with it. And the whole time, the whole time, you're like those two men on the road to Emmaus. Just talking about everything going on, so distraught, so down, down, down and out, disheartened. And the whole time, Jesus is right there. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm going to go with you always, even to the very end. To the very end of the road to Emmaus, to the very end of, uh, uh, of, of your street, your street, your street, what, whatever's going on in your life, he's going to go all the way to the very end. And then he's going to go with you into eternity. There you're going to be with him. There we're going to be with Jesus in eternity. I don't know about you, but it just really, it just really, go, it really does something for me. The sadness that, that they felt, I believe, as they were on the road to Emmaus and, and they were talking to the man, not knowing at the moment that it was Jesus. I really believe that they, they had, well, the Bible does say they had that feeling. Didn't it, don't it say they had a feeling? They spoke it afterwards as, as they realized that it was Jesus. They, they said, didn't we feel 
yeah, didn't we, didn't we feel it? Didn't we just think there was something different? Don't you, when, 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 you're, when you're in the car and you're by yourself and you're going down the road and, and, and you're thinking about all these things and, and this peaceful feeling just comes all over you, you know that's God. You know that's the Lord. I know that you've all felt it. I felt it. I felt it many times when I would just be so, so distraught over things that were going on and I had no control over. Have you ever felt that? You don't have control over things? Oh, man, I felt it many times. That's why we have to give everything to God because we know that if we give it to the Lord, lay it down at the foot of the cross. If we give it to the Lord, then He can take care of it. He can, he can direct your paths. He'll say with a still small voice, this is the way. Walk ye in it. I love that scripture. That's one of my, I say one of my favorites. I got all kinds of favorites. The whole Bible's my favorite, I guess. But I, I just love that one. I will go to it and I'll read it. This is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the left and when you turn to the right, this is the way. Walk ye in it. He speaks peace to us during those times. He'll speak peace in those, those, just those words. Just those words. And I, can, I, I know if you're like me, you can, get, you can get overwhelmed. Joey will have to calm me down sometime. Y'all have to calm anybody down? He has to calm me down. He'll say, now Martha. <laughs> now Martha. <laughs> calm down, Martha. You know. And, and then I realize... You know, I've got to get back in the, into my, my place with the Lord. And I've got to hear that still, small voice saying, This is the way. This is what you do. This is where you go. This is how you speak. This is how you, this is how you live your life. This is, you know, all these things. This is how you go to work, even. This is how you go to work. I drove a bus. And we had a certain route we had to go to. We had to go in a certain uh, way. Because we had that little, what do you call them, where they put them on the... The track and things. They, they knew exactly where we were. GPS, thank you. They, they, they knew exactly where we were. And so we had to, and this was just a couple of years before I retired. And they had these things, and they knew exactly. And they would give us our, our vias. That's what they called them. And we had to go by that via. We could not go outside that via. We weren't supposed to. But when the Lord spoke to me and would say, go this direction, I told my supervisor, I said, I went a different direction this morning. All right, that's okay. Give me the pen. She writes it down, you know, signs it. It's okay. Martha's all right. <laughs> but when the Lord says something, because there was apparently in the direction that I was going, and you've all been there. I'm sure you've been there before where the Lord speak to you and say, go in a different direction. And then you find out later on that there was an accident. And you probably would have been the one right in the end of it. So we've got, to, we've got to just listen to the voice of the Lord. That still, small voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. The main instructions that the Lord gives us after his uh, crucifixion and resurrection was, uh, go into all the world. Uh, go into all the world. I want to I, I tell you all how we're going to go into all the world in just a minute. But I'm going to read Matthew 28, 18 through 20 again because I want you to get this in your spirit. It says, the Lord, uh, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Whatever the Lord says to you, tell, tell the people. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus had sent word before he spoke these words. Jesus had sent word to the disciples to meet him in Galilee. If you read the, the uh, whole chapter of 28, you'll see that he had sent word. He told them, he said, meet, us, meet me in, in Galilee. And all of them went, minus Judas, the betrayer. We know that. He wasn't there anymore. And, and so there was 11 of them. And they followed the instructions without knowing what would take place. Do you follow instructions when you don't know what's going to take place? Do you want to know what's going to take place during a, a, a certain situation? And, and, and you say, but what? But what? But where? But how? But when? What? 
You, gotta, you just feel like you got to know. Well, it says that they followed these instructions. Jesus said, meet them. They just walked on to Galilee, and they waited on him until he got there. We must be willing to do that same thing. Sometimes, I'm, I'm telling you, the Lord's not going to give us the whole picture. He's not going to give you the whole picture. you got to take that first step. you got to take that first foot, and you got to put it out there. I tell you all that all the time. you got to put that foot out there, and you got to say, Lord, I'm just going to depend on you. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to see it through. I know that you've got your hand on me. I know that you've got your, your plan for me. I know that it's all going to work out. we just got to give it to you and hold on. Hold on. It's what we got to do. We got to be willing. And Jesus opens up when he gets there. He opens up and he says, All power is given unto me. All power. Now, this is Jesus talking. All power is given unto me. He's the commander in chief of heaven and earth. You know, he's, he's not going to go, he's not going to do a, 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 a four year uh, um, term, term. I'll get it out there, y'all. Y'all have to help me out. He ain't going to do an eight-year term. He's going to do a forever term. He is forever. He is for in, in eternity. He will be forever and forever our commander-in-chief. That's the way I look at it. He says, go into all the world. Teach all nations. He's telling us, go everywhere, y'all. Tell everybody. Tell everybody. Make disciples tell people about him let them know what he has done for you and don't be ashamed to do it don't be ashamed because the bible says if we're ashamed of him he's gonna be ashamed of us and we don't want him to be ashamed of us before the father we don't we want to be able to open our mouth and just say lord help me and let me say what you want me to say let me go where you want me to go each one, reach one. I think of that, Julia, all the time. I pray that. Lord, let each one of us reach one. Each one, reach one. It's a song, too, because I used to sing it. It just dawned on me. I forgot. I used to sing it a, lot of, a long time ago, years ago. Man, I'll have to look that up. Y'all remind me. Okay, let's go on. Matthew 10, 5 through 6 says, These twelve Jesus sent forth. Now, this was before the resurrection, before anything, or the crucifixion. And Jesus sent them forth, and he commanded them, saying, Go not into the uh, way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter you not. Now, this is different. You've got to listen real close. He says, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's when he first told the disciples, Go out. But I just want you to go to the house of Israel right now. And then when, when Jesus was resurrected, he said, go into all the world. Go tell everybody, Jesus is alive. Jesus is coming soon. He's going to come back for you one day. Just be ready. That's what he's wanting us to tell people. Just go tell the good news of the gospel. This commission in Matthew 28, it's, it, it's for everybody. It's not for just a, a few preachers, a few teachers, a, a few prophets, a, 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 or anybody else. It's for everybody to go tell the good news of the gospel. And for e who, whoever, wherever, whenever, however. That's what the Lord wants you to be willing to do. Just whatever he commands you to do. And it is a command. This is not an option, y'all. Let me go ahead and tell you. <laughs> This great commission where the Lord tells us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. It's not an option. It's for every Christian to tell. It is a command to go out there and tell the world that Jesus saved. Jesus saved me. He took me. He, 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 he takes me. He, he, he watches over me. He cares for me. He gives me what I need. He, he, he does for me things that I cannot even imagine. He does it. I'm sorry, Joey, but I know I'm walking. The enemy tries to stop us. He tries to stop us. I've told you stories, and you've got stories, I'm sure, of how he would try to stop me. 
And I'd say, I, I can't talk. I can't talk. But the Lord would keep saying, keep going. Keep going. Go forward. Don't go backward. I couldn't tell you how many times I went backward because I was afraid or, or, or I was upset or, or I didn't think that anybody would listen to me or I didn't think that, that I had any words to say because the enemy was speaking into my ear and I didn't say, get thee behind me like Jesus teaches us. Get thee behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. And, we, and he has to do that. When we stand up in our authority, he has to get thee behind us. Can I get an amen? Let me get another amen, a little bit louder. Amen. So everybody uh, out there will know that I do have a congregation. <laughs> God is so good. Joey's just sitting back there. I know he's, he's um, mm. but we got to remember that that Jesus is Jehovah Shama. I've been going through some of these things. You know, you hear me say a lot of times, or hear me pray a lot of times, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. There's a lot of different words that that Jehovah means. Jehovah uh, Nisi, Jehovah Shama. Jehovah Shama means He's here. He's right here with me. So we can call on Jehovah Shama. Say, Lord, I know you're here. I know you're with me. And I know you won't leave me. Jesus promised. He promises to help us. He promises that the Holy Spirit will be right there. And the Holy Spirit will give you words to say when you speak to somebody. When you begin to tell them about the Lord. And some people will tell me, well, what am I supposed to say? I don't know what to say. Give them, give them your testimony. You're made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the words of your testimony. We've all got a testimony. If we've come to Jesus, if we've had that time where we say, Lord, forgive me, we've all got a testimony. And we've got testimony after testimony about the things that He does for us and the way that He takes care of you. You know He's your protector, right? You do know that in the time of need. And we can get, as, as in the flesh, as humans, we can get in some pretty messed up places. I've been there. I said, Lord, you've got to help me out of this. I can't do this one. I, 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 don't, I, I have no control. I cannot get out of this one. You're going to have to take care of me and walk me through it, walk me out of it. He'll walk us out of things. Did you realize just like he walked out of there? Just like he walked out of that tomb, he'll walk us out. Where the enemy has said, oh, they're in the tomb. I got them. You know, that's over. It's over. No, no. The Lord will just take you by the hand. And he'll say, let's go. Let's go. And he'll walk you through those hard times. He'll walk you through them. We must follow the Holy Spirit's leading. I want to make sure everybody understands that. We've got to follow what the Holy Spirit tells us. You know, that little conscience inside you. That's the Holy Spirit. To me, that's the Holy Spirit talking. Because if, if, he does, if the Lord doesn't want me to go in, in a certain direction, I'll hear that, uh-uh. Don't you go there. Don't you go there. Don't you do that. Don't you pick that up. Don't you, you know, and I know all of y'all say, don't you pick that up. <laughs> I know that's y'all and not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> because of my back but uh, he'll, he'll tell us what's right he will tell us he will not lead you in the wrong direction people let me tell you that the Holy Spirit Jesus Christ Father God will not lead you in the wrong direction he won't do it he always he is truth and he is light and he is life he's life Life everlasting. He speaks to us through God's word. He speaks to us through other people. I've had preachers to, to, to preach from the pulpit. I, and I even asked Pastor McGraw one time. I said, you know, if I didn't know Brett or Pastor McGraw, I would think that you are a fly on my wall at my house. Have you ever felt that way? 
I have many times when, when a pastor or, or a preacher or even on TV, and I think, how in the world did they know that? God. God. God speaks to our hearts. He'll speak to your heart. We just got to, we have to take that time. I know he speaks to your hearts because I hear y'all tell me things all the time. God's so good. He's so good to us. The Holy Spirit will show us how. This is what I was going to tell you. Tuesday, I decided that I was going to look up in Google. <laughs> Y'all know I love Google. I love Google. And so I, I, I looked up, I, I said in Google, I wanted to know how many names there were. What kind of, or not how many names, but what kind of social media there was. How many? How many? Y'all, are y'all understanding what I'm saying? I don't remember how I put it down on, uh, in, the, in the Google search. But here's just a few. And I'm going somewhere with this, so y'all listen to it. Here's just a few. And I don't remember. There was many, many, many more. But it's Facebook, Twitter. If I get the, if I get the pronunciation wrong, y'all just tell me. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snap, uh, Snapshot, is that right? Snapchat. Snapchat, okay, I wrote that wrong. Uh, YouTube, Tumblr, Reddit, Flickr, TikTok, uh, QZone, Meetup, that's a teenager, Meetup, Messenger, WeChat and WhatsApp, A-P-P, not WhatsApp. I wrote down WhatsApp, but it was WhatsApp. <laughs> now, if you use any of these, and I know you do, you use them, why don't you raise your hand? Look at Joey. He's got his hand up already. Everybody that, that uses at least one of these, raise your hand. Oh, come on, y'all old people. <laughs> oh, you got yours up. Good for you. <laughs> I was looking over there. I got to do something with them. I got to help them out here. (laughs) I challenge y'all. If you use any of these, I challenge you. Leave a scripture. Leave a scripture. Put something on there. Do what? The word won't return void. Leave a scripture. Let people know that you're a Christian. Let them know. Put something good on your, on your Facebook. Let people know that you're a Christian, that you have a relationship with Jesus. Let them know. And I said, Lord, why, are you, why am I supposed to do this? Why am I looking at all of this? And this is what the Holy Spirit said. He said, Jesus had it planned all the time, Debbie. All the time the time Jesus had all these things planned and he said social media is everybody's platform think about it think about it DJ it's everybody's platform so I'm going to ask you today those of you that use it what is it you're putting on your platform I had to stop, Jordan. I had to stop and think for myself. What am I putting on my platform? Am I allowing people? Because I'm going to tell you, Joey can show me something in a different language and all we have to do is hit a little button and it comes in into uh, uh, English. God has worked all of this out. That's how he's getting his word out. That's how he's getting the Lord Jesus is coming back. That's how he's letting everybody know because we've all wondered, how in the world, Lord, how are you going to get all of those those mountain people way, way up there that don't even know that that, uh, there's a a civilization that's down below? How how are they going to know that? He's working it out. He's working it out. You see these people in Haiti. They've got these, they've got the, they've got the phones. They've got the the computers. They've got the word. 
And there's preachers over there that are taking what they got and they're taking them up into that mountain. I don't know if any of you were here when we sent, when we sent computers over to Haiti from the other church and set them up. Were y'all there? Any of y'all there when we set them up? It was just a couple of years, I think probably before we, before we left, wasn't it, Julia? But we sent computers over there. That was a part of me. Joey stood in line at Christmas time to get one cheaper. Because the pastor sent everybody out. Go get them. Go get them, y'all. Because we're sending them over there. I'm telling you. Because that root is there. It's in here too. Whatever is being preached from those computers whoever's being touched whoever's being saved Barbara I don't care if you put a I don't care if you put a penny in there when there was a, 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 a two mites think about it you're a part of it We're, I'm a part of it I'm a part you're a part of getting the word out to everybody we've got how many how many do we No, I'm talking, I'm talking about, we, we uh, I should ask Debbie, she's the one that writes the checks. You send out checks to two different, is it two different missions, two different ones? Two different ones right now. And you're the ones that's touching them. So see, when you stand before God, and He's giving out His, uh, giving out the, the uh, rewards, crowns, when he's giving them out, you're going to get that reward because you gave in the offering and you prayed for our missions and people were saved. Think about it. Think about it. Yes. It's, it's for everybody. It's a command. It is commanded. He said, and lo, when he finished it, he said, lo, I'm with you. I'm going to be with you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to leave you helpless. You know, we, that's, and I learned the hard way that that's where the enemy will sit on your shoulders. Like, you can do that. Tiffany, you can't talk to them. You can't tell them about the Lord. You'll look so silly. Don't you do that. And I believed it at times when I was younger. But I learned. I learned that if I just open up, say that first word. The Holy Spirit. Jesus is right there. And he's going to just let you say. It'll come to your mind. And he'll say. Or, or he'll, he'll speak through you. He'll speak it through you. God's good. God's good. I just, you know, I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't get over when the Lord said what he did about um, the Internet. Because, you know, lots of people, lots of people don't believe that the Internet's a good thing. And there are lots of bad, bad things. But we don't have to be a part of that. We can let them know that Jesus loves them. Amen. Let them know that Jesus loves them without even leaving home. Without even leaving home, you don't even have to leave home to tell somebody about Jesus. You don't even have to pick the phone up. <laughs> you just get on the internet and speak it out. Speak it out. Put some little word, like Joey said, the Bible tells us his word will not return void. But it will go out and it will accomplish everything that he set it out to do. Everything. Everything. And you'll be amazed. You'll be totally amazed. In closing today, I just I want us to, to reflect on the commission. I want you to remember these words. Go into all the world. And now you know how to go into all the world. The Holy Spirit has opened it up to us. 
to know how to go into all the world without even leaving home and preach the gospel. Tell people Jesus is coming because it's imperative, people. I'm telling you, it's getting close. It's imperative that people know. It's imperative that our families know. It's more important, important it's, it's important to us, I should say, to make sure that our families know that Jesus is coming, that he's, gonna, that he's there for them. And when you go through things, he's going to wrap you in that blanket of love and he's going to protect you and take care of you in everything. Let's stand. I want you to go home with this, with this thought today about reflecting on the commission, the great commission, go into all the world. But I want you to think, and I want you to ask the Lord yourself, ask yourself, am I doing enough for the Lord? Am I telling people about the Lord? Am I, am I doing what the Lord wants me to do? That's the, that's the main thing is that we do what the Lord wants us to do, to go and tell others. Um, because, you know, I, and I've heard it from other pastors, somebody's waiting for you to tell them. Somebody told you, didn't they? Or you wouldn't have known. So somebody is waiting. Somebody's waiting for you to tell them about Jesus. Don't hold that, that that's a, it's a jewel. Don't hold that jewel. It's the most important thing. Give it out. Give it out. Oh, God is good. Let's bow our heads. Lord, I thank you today for your many blessings. I thank you for your word. Your word that's fitly spoken like apples of gold and pictures of silver. And that's what they'll be, Lord, when we speak them out to people. When we tell them about the goodness of the Lord and what you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We ask, God, that you would seal your word to our hearts, our minds, our thoughts. That we would remember God this week when we go out, Father God. And you put somebody in front of us, Lord. We pray, God, that you would just open our mouths. Holy Spirit, help us. Every one of us to open our mouths and tell somebody about the Lord and about his goodness and about Easter on resurrection morning, Lord. Oh, how we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your anointing and your power, your love, your truth, God, that endureth to all generations. Lord, we thank you that you are touching the sick and the afflicted, Lord, that are at home, that are not able to be here, God. We know, God, that you've got a plan and that you're working things out for them, Father God. We believe, Lord, that you are bringing healing. Lord, miracles. We speak miracles, God, and we speak revival in people's hearts, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, send revival into our hearts, God. We thank you and we praise you for this. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Y'all make sure that you tell somebody this week about the Lord. And take your bulletins. Joey made a few extras. Take your bulletins and tell somebody to be here on Easter morning. We got some, some uh, uh, visitors that will be here. I've done heard people talking about the ones that are coming. So y'all just make sure that you tell somebody because I'm really expecting this to be just, a, just an out. I, I, I don't even know the word for it. Just an a outpour, outpouring of the Holy Spirit and, and doing a work in people's hearts and lives. I believe it. And I trust him. Practice afterwards quickly if everybody will get up here and we can get everybody in their positions and get it going through, then you can go home earlier. And remember, Joey loves you. Jo oh, Joey and Martha loves you. <laughs> but God loves y'all more. Have a great week.